the, the port of entry into the, 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 the importing country. We also have partnerships with our contract managers. This is mainly on the part of input finance, where we finance insecticide, seed, fertilizer, diesel for our, for our small scale and, and, and commercial farmers. We have people going out there managing our risk. I do not look at the farmer's balance sheet. In Africa, ladies and gentlemen, that does not work. A, a, a farmer does not have, have a balance sheet strong enough to back up the commercial cost of producing a crop. We actually take the crop under cultivation as collateral for the loan, but I need somebody to go and manage that. If the farmer doesn't plant, I don't have collateral. If fertilizer goes into the ground and it rains, it's gone. I have to wait for next year, and the value is, is depleted. So there's these little nuances that we need to understand. Then also we make extensive use of multi-peril insurance. There's an old saying in terms of farming that if you want to make a small fortune out of farming, you've got to start with a big fortune. Now, the bank doesn't like that approach. So what we do is we use multi-peril insurance to cover against crop cultivation risks such as drought, insects, flood, hail, and all the other related issues that, that, that can actually damage a crop. And then what you also do is we partner with marine insurers. Remember, if I take the collateral, uh, the intrinsic value of, of, of the stock as collateral, I have an insurable interest when that, when that stock is on the high seas. So I need to have a partnership with my marine insurer to make sure that I pay the premium, the policy is adequate, and it covers my risk when something should happen to that, to that stock. And then I think lastly, but definitely not less important, is the fact that we must engage our exchanges. In South Africa, we are fortunate enough. We've got a liquid and very transparent exchange called SAFIX, or South African Futures Exchange. We normally do links with Chicago Board of Trade in some circumstances, but we always also talk to people like option writers and large international traders to give us a minimum price to link that part of our business backwards. Andre made the statement, we start with the end of the cycle. In other words, the market. And if that market doesn't have a price, it's very difficult to work back to know what I'm willing and able to pay my producer at the, at the beginning of the cycle. So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, worthwhile to maybe put a slide on. I think, just to sum it up, an unconventional approach is required to make this work. Banks need to look at this differently. Um, we cannot look at balance sheets anymore. Post-crisis, it doesn't work. Balance sheets are not there for us to take equity and security. We've got to look at the trade flow to make that work for us. And I think we need to understand the associated risks. We did talk about that in some, uh, in some instances. And um, use of collateral controllers, I think, is maybe the most important there. I don't want to relay the whole thing. Um, but what we also want to do is, is, is link up with people like the ITC, and specifically the ITC. And what we've, 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 we've managed and, and what we've realized in the past two days is that we need to ensure broad awareness of the move towards an alternative financing methodology. Standard Chartered can't do it all. We certainly do not want to do it all, but we need to have partners to work with us in, in terms of this. We need the, the IFC to help us to identify likely markets. That's why we're here today. And uh, we also need the ITC to help us to educate participants along the value chain. Now, this includes our producers, both small scale, commercial farmers, traders, both international and smaller traders. We've got a multitude of regional traders in Africa who's doing very well because of our methodology of financing based on the stock. And then storers, processors, transporters as well. We have some commentators from the shipping industry who we'll, we'll, we'll talk later. Banks, DFOs, and the public sector. Crucial in terms of subsidies and, and, and taking a first loss where we need that first loss to make our, our small scale farmers work. And that, ladies and gentlemen, for me. Thank you, Minister. I think the first two speakers deserve a much better round of applause than that, ladies and gentlemen. Because they're making my task that much easier. Um, Andre, I th remember the adage that um, Africa eats what it doesn't produce and produces what it doesn't eat. And I think that um, I'd like to thank the two of you for initiating the type of conversation that we need closer to home. And um, that is sort of looking at what ITC could be doing, and even though we know that ITC is not a financier, it could certainly provide a facilitation vehicle for alternative financing. And um, when we look at the next two speakers, we'll be looking at case studies, and uh, that would give us a more practical understanding of how collateral works, and looking at how banks should be more fully conversant with financing and alternative structuring techniques. I'm going to hand over to Mr. Kumar so that he could give you his practical example in the leather business. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Madam Chairman, Patricia, officials of ITC, my friends from across the world. I bring great greetings from your yeah, billion plus Indians. This is a very large perspective that what we are going to address and see. Firstly, to understand what an SME sector in India could be. And only then would we know the kind of size and kind of impact that what we could uh, impact. 40%, more than 40% of the exports from India are from SME sector. There are more than 8,000 distinct products manufactured by more than 10.5 million units, and they are valued at in excess of 300 billion US dollars. 34 percent of the total products that are manufactured by the SMEs are exported. It employs 35 million people, and it has the advantage of very quick reflexibility. Of the leather front, we are logging around 3.5 billion dollars in exports, employing about 2 million people. It grew with, in the 70s, I'm talking only about the footwear, it was a mere 35 million US dollars. In the 80s, it reached 100. In the 90s, 350 million. In the 2000, 600 million. But then it leapfrogged by 2010 to 1500 million or 1.5 billion. One interesting aspect is this was the last, was the decade when the liberalization of India was seen and it had an impact. So liberalization and liberal policies in a country is so very important for the growth of an industry. Both cannot be in any way isolated and seen apart. As far as funding of SMEs is concerned, we have a dedicated bank in India, Small Industries Development Bank of India, which is uh, exclusively looking after the interests of the small industries. And regardless of the turmoil financially in the last two years, Indian industry was less affected because of its lesser reliance to US markets, and it was more confined to smaller quantities dispersed over a wide market across Europe. The essential features for the growth of SMEs, as I said, overall a liberalized economy is very important. Access to best affordable technology, I would say, is another important factor. Access to infrastructure is another important, which many countries miss out, which we also do at our country, even at this point, in many places. Adequate fund flow, which is the one that we are going to see here at this uh, uh, interaction. Cross-cultural integration is something very important. You cannot have a service sector without knowing the language of the country where you're working with. Although in the early morning hours, free lunch, they said language would not be a barrier, but it does at this point of time. Marketing assistance to understand the right markets is very important for SMEs, and SMEs would need to be skill intensive. The problems that what usually SMEs face including in India, and of course in our industry, usually there is a herd mentality because of a lack of stewardship. There are no leaders, like in corporate uh, jobs, you cannot hire big management consultants, and therefore they need to see what the other one is doing and follow the same area and route. Disorganized and scattered in many places because there, there are no clusters. And this is one area where our government has uh, now started looking up at creating clusters and which has wonderfully helped the industry to grow. And usually less awareness to social and environmental norms. This is also sometimes exploited by barriers and it is uh, to reach the industry quite late until they are already affected. And one another critical area is private borrowings. This is because of a complicated system of banking and the kinds of forms that what we need to fill and to put up the balance sheets and so. Uh, I had, I wish I had more zwans in our country 